we are unhauling some books. It is that time for my quarterly unhaul and I've started storing the books I'm gonna unhaul in my closet and when I opened my closet they avalanched and I felt like that meant it was time <laughs> for me to make a trip to McKay's. So mm, it can be interesting. This is um there's a good stack of these I can't show you yet because they're gonna be in a video that I don't remember what the timing is of this video versus that video. So I'm not gonna show you every single one, but a lot of these I'm unhauling because I read them and did not like them, I DNF'd them, or I, at the end of every year, I kind of like, do a little bit of a TBR cleanup in terms of looking at what I have planned for the next year and thinking through like, do I really have a plan to read this book? And sometimes the answer is no. And that's a hard truth. But sometimes it is the truth that I have to confront. With that in mind, let's talk about what I'm getting rid of. Okay, here's a little stack of ones I DNF that I can talk to you about. So, well, let's start with a couple you've already seen. So in my um, unwrapping vlog I did where I wrapped up a bunch of books at the end of 2022 and I was slowly unwrapping them throughout the year in 2023, which I really enjoyed and I do have plans for the, those remaining books. And it also has inspired a couple of other projects for this coming year. Again, I don't remember when this is going up, so I don't know if you know about them yet. <laughs> but uh, two books in that video that you've already seen that I DNF'd. One was Horologicon by Mark Forsyth. Nothing wrong with this, but it's not really written to be read. It's more just sort of like one-off paragraphs about words that have fallen out of use in the English language. So if that sounds like a f uh, an interesting premise, you know, definitely recommend, but not one I'm planning on reading. So I DNF'd that. And then I also DNF'd Rule of Capture by Christopher Brown in that particular reading vlog because I wasn't wild about the writing and it was just, it's dystopia and it was sad. I wasn't in the right mood for that or frame of mind for it. So between those two things, it just felt like I tried, but time to let this go. A book series I tried to start and did not enjoy that I've not told you guys about yet uh, was Prince of Thorns by Mark Lawrence. This is the like of Thorns series. It's Prince of Thorns, King of Thorns. Emperor of Thorns. Um, I'm getting rid of this because I read about a hundred pages and I was not enjoying the writing, I was not enjoying the world, and I was not enjoying the characters. So this is grimdark and some grim things happen, but that wasn't really so much my problem. I just, it didn't have any of the things that I've previously liked about Mark Lawrence's work. So I'm chalking this up. I don't remember if this was his actual debut, but it was definitely a book that he published early in his writing career. Yeah, yeah, Prince of Thorns is his first published novel. There you go. So I just think that this is an author early in their career, and this is just not a series for me from them. I will tell you that this is a very grim, dark series, like some brutal stuff happens in this. So if that is not for you, this series is just straight up not for you. But I will also caution you, at least in my experience, if you have enjoyed things from Mark Lawrence in the past, which I definitely have. I love that Red Sister trilogy. Love it. Um, this does not remind me enough of that in terms of sort of the writing and overall world building. So I would pass on this. It wasn't for me, but your mileage may vary. And then I started to read The Stranger Upstairs by Lisa A. M. Matlin because I saw this showing up on several people's worst of the year lists. <laughs> and I had picked this up because I thought that it had a decent chance of making the Goodreads um, Choice Award list. So I picked this up. I don't regret it because it was my pick for that month and I ended up getting Bright Young Women as an add-on in that month as well as another book we're gonna talk about that I also enjoyed. Um, so I'm not mad that I got this, but I DNF'd it real quick. <laughs> so I picked it up because I was like, hmm, I don't wanna let this languish if people say it's not that good. <laughs> like, let's just go ahead and see if I'm gonna like it. And I couldn't get past, I think like 30 pages, the writing, ugh, 
not for me. And it's much more domestic suspense-y than I thought I was getting. I thought I was getting like a haunted house story with like a social media element and it reads much more like domestic suspense. So I can't tell you for sure that I don't like this in terms of if I read the whole thing, but I definitely did not enjoy it enough to finish it. And I will tell you it did make several people that I watch their worst of the year list. So there you go. And then I was trying, I was in the mood for something cozy. So I went to my shelf because I have been, you know, accumulating a few cozier things. I picked up The Witches of Moonshire Manor by Bianca Mar Marais. And um, yeah, that did not like this at all. The writing was really not for me. It didn't feel cozy. It is about a group of witches. I don't even really know what this is about, to be honest. I, I, I remained confused about what was going on and it did not have the coziness that I had picked it up hoping for. So I just kind of DNF'd out of it pretty quick. But yeah, not for me. Not one I would recommend if you're looking for cozy vibes. Let's move on to more positivity because I didn't hate any of these books. I just didn't like them enough to hold on to them. So that's that's why they're going. And actually this one I did like enough to hold on to, but I don't really keep mass markets unless they have some kind of sentimental value. And that is A Prince on Paper by Alyssa Cole. This was good. This was really good. I This made my best romance of 2023 list. It is in her Reluctant Royal series. I definitely recommend it. It's just that it's a mass market and that's why I'm unhauling it. Of the stack, I probably liked Liar's Beach by Katie Catugno the least, but I still gave it three stars. I've read, like, it was fine. It's a quasi retelling. I think that's a little bit of a stretch uh, for The Mysterious Affair at Styles. So admittedly, very high bar for me because I absolutely love Agatha Christie. Uh, yeah, this was just kind of mid. It's a YA thriller that's not very thrilling. And I did not like the writing at all. That I will say. I think it's fine. Tr maybe try a sample chapter before you pick this up to get a sense if you can deal with the author's voice and characterization because that was honestly the part that worked the least for me. So Many Beginnings by Bethany C. Morrow. I actually quite liked this, but I just didn't, I don't know, like I like the project of this I think more than the actual book. It's a retelling of, um, not Pride and Prejudice, Little Women. And I think it's worth picking up, uh, particularly again if you get along with the writing a little bit better than I did. But I thought there were interesting ideas in here, like it was worth my time, I enjoyed it, but it's just not, I didn't enjoy it enough to hold on to it. Just Another Missing Person by Jillian McAllister. This is the other book that I got as an add-on with The Stranger Upstairs because I thought it might make the Goodreads Choice Awards and it did not. And I see why it's definitely nowhere near as good as Wrong Place, Wrong Time. But the thing that is consistent between the two is that I like the actual writing and the actual like authorial voice so much in both of these. Uh, this one is a missing persons story. It has some, you know, nuances and twists, but I'm not a huge fan of missing person tropes in crime fiction. And while I did very much enjoy the writing, the plot I found to just be so-so. The Jeweled Moth by Catherine Woodfine. This is a uh, middle grade mystery series that Leanna accidentally got double of, like she ordered the series and they sent her two. So she then sent me <laughs> her extra one. And so I've been, you know, I picked up uh, two of them at this point and I gave both of them three stars. This is really cute. This is very Nancy Drew, but it's Nancy Drew meets, um, the Agency by Y.S. Lee. If you have read that series, I think that's kind of the intersection here. And I think that they're charming. They're perfectly well done. I don't think they're super memorable, but it does give me kind of a cozy-ish vibe as an adult reader of middle grade. I would recommend the, the series so far. It's not a favorite. It's not, you know, blowing me away, but perfectly enjoyable and very cozy if you're an adult reader who can get into middle grade mystery. And then the one of these I like the best, but I just realized, I don't know, I just don't feel the need to hold on to it, is The Only One Left by Riley Sager. I gave this four stars. I think that this is very entertaining, very page turning, but 
I just don't, it's not my favorite from him. I guess my favorite from him is that I've read so far is probably Home Before Dark, which I have kept because I do like that as a haunted house story. I like that one better, but this is entertaining. I recommend it. It does have kind of a bananas ending, but it was kind of camp, so I was into that. Fun. It's a sort of a take on Lizzie Borden, but in a creepy old house. And there's a nurse taking care of the woman who is sort of thought to be a Lizzie Borden-esque character, and she's trying to find out what happened. So yeah, this was good, just I don't need to hold on to it. I need to figure out how to show you. I'm just gonna, I'm not even gonna pick it up. There's a stack back here. Uh, I'm gonna say nine or 10 books in it that I DNF'd and I'm unhauling, and you will see a lot more details about in either a recent or upcoming vlog. <laughs> so I'll just leave it there. Speaking of vlogs, these are all the books from the Goodreads Choice Award vlog I did that I'm not holding on to. Now I want to note something here. I think this is a good moment to talk about consumerism and consumerism as a booktuber versus a lay person, <laughs> a lay reader. Um, please always keep in mind that I can make the choice to buy books for a video if I'm buying them for a video because they're a tax write-off. I also make income back from booktube that, just so you know, peek behind the curtain. If revenue is down on booktube, my book buying budget goes down like that. I, I tie those two very closely together. So I want to make a note. It's cr like, don't, don't feel, I don't know what the right word is, but like, I think that there can be this feeling of like, oh, Mara just went out and bought like all these books for this video and she's not even holding on to them, which like, that's fair. If you just have that feeling, I have no real comeback to you <laughs> for that. But anyway, I just want to, I want to put that out there because I, f this feels very wasteful to me. And honestly, it ultimately probably is. I made the choice to do it for this one video. Once I actually started getting the books for it, I didn't love the way it felt. So I don't know that I would do something like this again. But anyway, that's a si side note and I just, I felt weird about it. So I kind of just wanted to say that. I think if I were gonna do a video like that again, where I would need to get all of those books in a really, the, the problem was in this case, I had to get them in such a short amount of time. And because they're popular, they're not necessarily available from the library. So um, I think if I were gonna do that again, I would pick some version that would allow me to use the library a lot more or draw it out over a bigger space of time. Anyway, I'm going on and I probably don't need to. I'm sure most of you didn't think about that, but I thought about it while it was going on. So I just thought I'd mention it. Anyway, so I'm not holding on to a lot of these because most of them, even if I like them, I don't like them enough to take up the space. So the ones I like, but I'm gonna pass on. The other thing is it does feel good to pass on some like new hot books to like to put them back into circulation. That feels kind of nice. Um, the one I like the best of these is Vera Wong's Unsolicited Advice for Murderers by Jesse Q. Sutanto. I just don't see myself rereading or necessarily referencing this that much. So for that reason, I'm going to pass it along. I did like Homecoming, but again, I'm never going to reread it. And I don't necessarily highly recommend it. Or like I don't have a lot of context in which I think I'd be recommending or referencing this. So we'll pass it along. What Lies in the Woods, I actually had all year, um, and I probably would have unhauled it before now, but uh, I thought it might be in the in the list, and it was. And I did like this, I gave this four stars, but if I wasn't holding on to it for the Goodreads video, I would have already unhauled it because it doesn't feel super impactful. And then the rest of these, like, I don't know. The River We Remember and All the Dangerous Things, I gave both of these three and a half stars and I already forget most of what happened in them. Like whatever. Over Woman was not really mystery, nor was Happiness Falls. Like I DNF'd Happiness Falls because I hated the writing style, but I do think I've seen other people liking it more than I did, but I just didn't like the writing. Leftover Woman is very good, but not a mystery. And none of this is true. I really didn't like. It was well written, but I did not like the characters, plot, or themes. So two stars. Yeah, so those are the ones that are going away. Um, I am holding on to a couple of the ones I picked up because I liked them, or I already had at least one of them. I don't know. 
Anyway, I think I feel like I made this weird. I'm just gonna move on. This last pile I'm gonna show you are things I got rid of as I was kind of like making my end of year, beginning of year planning and looking through what I had and realizing like, I think I can just let that go. So Strange Gods, A Secular History of Conversion by Susan Jacoby. I realized that if I ever want to read this, it is, I, there is an audio version from the library. And I think that's what I would do. It's so big. And one of my big findings this year is that unless it's a topic that I'm like imminently or like actively currently interested in, physical form nonfiction is not my favorite anymore. I tend to prefer to do that on audio. I didn't know that when I picked this up from Book Outlet like five years ago, but you live and you learn. I just I just don't think I'm going to get to this in this format anytime in the foreseeable future. So I think it's just time to let it go. Ooh, this one hurts a little bit. I realize that I just don't think I'm ever going to finish the Johan Cabal series. I just don't think it's going to happen. I I think that Johan Cabal, the detective, was kind of a one-off for me, which I adored. Still like a favorite book of mine. But the other books, I've read three of the five, and neither of the other two really lived up to the hype for me. And I was thinking about like, well, maybe I should just try to read one. And I tr started The Brothers Cabal, and immediately in the first few pages, I'm like, I'm loving the writing, but it's naming the the problem I have, which is, both of these characters have died so many times and been brought back because they, they are like necromancers. It just, the stakes feel kind of negligible at this point. So it's just very hard for me to be invested. So I think I'm just going to say goodbye, which feels weird and sad, but I just don't think this is a series I'm going to finish. And I'm just going to hold on to my wonderful love for Johan Cabal, the detective. And we're just going to leave it there. Flynn News, I also, yeah, I picked this up from Book Outlet a while ago for like $2. And my library now has an audio version of it if I ever want to listen to it. It's about women walking and like being in public spaces in the city, in cities in history. And if I decide I want to read that, I can listen to it from the library. Oh, yeah, I don't think I talked to you guys about this. Okay, so back when I DNF the Gilead series from Marilyn Robinson, I, because I just realized I wanted home to be a stand or not home. I wanted Gilead to be a standalone. I didn't want, want to read home or Lila, or I think there's one other one. Um, at that time, I went ahead and started trying to read one of her essay collections, which was when I was a child, I read books. And I just realized while her writing is very nice, I just don't think her ideas are for me really anymore. I was a very specific kind of person slash Christian when I was really vibing with her. And I just don't think that's where I'm at anymore. So for that reason, I have three essay collections from her. I've read like one offs from all of these, but I'm not going to complete them. And therefore, I think I should just go ahead and let them go. And the last one I can tell you guys about is The Anatomy of Violence, Biological Roots of Crime by Adrian Rain. I just realized I'm not interested enough in this topic. And I believe yeah, it's 10 years old at this point, And this area of study, my understanding is that there's a lot that is developed in those 10 years. So I even if I were to read this, I don't know how up to date the information would be. So for that reason, it feels like this is just not something I need to spend my time reading. I think yes, this was another book outlet pick. I went back towards the beginning of my channel. As many new booktubers are wont to do, I think I would went a little ham on Book Outlet, particularly with nonfiction and physical form. And I think that was just, that's a mistake that I'm currently working to correct slowly but surely by either reading those books or unhauling them. So you will, you will slash have seen more about some of those books that have been on my TBR a long time. Um, that is definitely going to be a theme for 2024. Anyway, okay, that is it for this unhaul. I feel like I talked a lot in this compared to what I normally do. Um, let me know what you thought about any of the books that are getting the heave ho. Let me know um, maybe how you like to unhaul things or one of the last books you unhauled that was particularly satisfying or particularly painful. Let me know that in the comments. 
And yeah, I think that will do it for me. So if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, follow me on the social means if you are so inclined. I have all that information listed in the description box below, and I think that, that will do it. I hope you're having an absolutely lovely day today, and I will just talk to you soon. Bye!